Hello again guys, Gazio back again here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hypostatic Symphony and how you can pretty much get all the rewards without having to put in too much work. Pretty much what are the bare minimum requirements so you can get all the prizes. So the way this challenge works is that there's seven different challenges and with each of them you can get a high score on it. The way the prize pool works is that it adds up the total amount of points you got within every challenge and puts into a total score, and your total score at the end has to equal 20,000. For example, if you got 100 points on challenge 2, but 200 points on challenge 1, your total points is going to be 300. And we're going to be taking a look on how you can get that 20,000 without having to put in too much work. If you look at the difficulty scaling, some of these modifiers can be pretty rough, so let's get right into it. First things first, let's look at the bare minimum points we need per challenge. With a total of 20,000 points divided by 7 challenges, you're going to need roughly 2,860. Every time you choose your modifiers, you want to make sure you get to that 2,860 mark. Now on the hardest difficulty with every modifier on, you could get a total of 4,275. If you can beat this, congrats to you because I had so much trouble. I, I can't even beat this on with all the modifiers on. Here's what you guys should keep in mind when you're choosing your modifiers. So first, to start off, make sure all the modifiers are checked on with the hardest difficulties, and we're gonna start removing these one by one until we get to that 2800 mark. So think to yourself, what can you take and what can't you take? Now, a good one to start off with is removing this one. Crit damage decreased by 50% because we want to make sure we kill it as fast as we can. Decreasing our own damage is going to be a little rough, so we're going to take that off. Next, let's say, you know, we're not the fastest, most high DPS bursty characters. We're going to need a little more time, so let's just go ahead and put this down to 180 seconds and let's go remove this down to 50%. Now as you can see the number is going down so we're pretty much removing these one by one prioritizing what we can take and what we can't take. If your main DPS is cryo or physical damage then you might want to take off the one that you have. So for example if you have Ganyu you might want to take this off so you can try burst him down as fast as you can. Now let's say you're running Tartaglia. You could keep both of these on because it's not going to affect him whatsoever. Next thing for healing, personally I think you should just keep this on, just try avoid as many hits as you can can, then you should be fine. Same thing with this one, when HP is lower than 50%, decrease your attack by 25%. Just so make sure your HP just stays up there, keep your heals up, Jean, Barbara, whatever you got, just keep your health above 50%, you should be fine. All party members energy recharge decreased by 80%. Now this one's situational. Depending on how your DPS really is, you might want to take it or keep it on. For example, I use Child, so most of my DPS comes from my normal attack, so I wouldn't really need energy recharge. If you're a old spammy team, this may be needed, so you could take it off or keep it on. Switching characters increases the damage taken by all characters in the party by 25%. This effect stacks up to 4 times. Now with this one, if you find yourself getting hit a lot, then you might want to take this off. If you're able to dodge all of the hypostasis moves, then this one should be okay. Honestly, if you're good at just dodging, then you'll be fine. Opponent's attack increased by 50%, I'd keep that one on because, again, if you can just dodge the hits, then you should be alright. Now for the next two, it's either one or the other. All party members' movement speed decreased by 20%, or after sprinting all characters in your own party take 75% increased damage for 10 seconds. Now, if you're good at dodging, then you might want to turn this one off and keep this one on. Just keep the damage increase taken by 75% because if you're dodging all the hits, then it shouldn't really matter. Now, if you find yourself getting hit even without the speed boost, I would take this off and put this on because you're gonna get hit anyway, so might as well. But if you're a real, real pro, just keep both of them on. And last but not least, elemental skill cooldown is decreased by 100%. This one, since I run child, I want to take this off because I want to have that stance change cooldown as low as possible, and this is really gonna hinder my DPS, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. As you can see at the bottom, we're at 3330, so that means we still have a little bit of room to take a couple things off. So let's start off with taking this off because sprinting is always pretty good, easier to dodge, and let's go ahead and take off cryo resistance because I'm running Ganyu. And now we're down to 2880, so that is just above the 2860 mark, so I think this is as much as we can go. Again, this is only for people who are trying to just get the bare minimum, who don't really want to go all out and test their DPS and do the hardest things possible, they just want to get the prizes and you know just call it a day, this is how you do it. Now that we have our modifiers set, everything is okay. Things to keep in mind when choosing is you want your damage to be up, you don't want to hinder any of your DPS so then you can kill them in time. Personally, increasing the hypostasis damage or taking more damage uh, 
shouldn't affect you too much as long as you could avoid. Since the first one is Electro Hypostasis, if you guys fought him a good amount of times and you already know his attack patterns, then there should be no worries. The ones you take off or turn on really depend on your playstyle, but again, just prioritize the ones you really need versus the ones you really don't need. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is the team I'm going to be running. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So the boss fight is just a regular Electro Hypostasis. A miscalculation. My experiment. Wind, hear me. This shouldn't let your guard down. Access denied. Ashes to ashes. And there you go, 2880. Now I still had a couple more seconds before the challenge ran out, so you get a little bit of extra time depending on how you modify your challenge. As you can see, I was a little sloppy during that challenge as well. Albedo died, I was just face tanking some hits. I'm by no means a pro, so if you can be a little more optimal than I am, then you should be okay. A couple things to also mention, Ganyu, Zheng Ling, Chan Yun, and D Luke have damage increases, so if you have any of those, just a little extra DPS makes it a little easier. In conclusion, your score only needs to be 2860 for each of these seven challenges, so you can get the total 20,000 in the end. That's the minimum, you don't need to go anymore. When selecting your difficulty, just make sure you check off the things you absolutely need, prioritizing your damage output and lowering the boss's HP. Don't worry too much about taking increased damage or the hypostasis doing more damage. I think it's more effective to just memorize his attack patterns and try dodge them. So yeah, killing the boss as fast as you can is what's most important. Lower his HP, increase your damage, you should be okay. That being said, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Best of luck on the Hypostatic Symphony. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.